Check this out. Geese often fly with their bodies turned upside down. At the same time, a bird twists its neck and head in such a way that you might think it's a regular position when you first see it. But then you're likely to notice that the goose has actually flipped around and twisted its neck 180 degrees. This way, the bird looks like a flying pretzel. It's a phenomenon called whiffling. It helps geese lose speed and land faster than they do in the regular position. Some scientists think this may be a technique to avoid dangerous animals that are after the birds. It might also help geese spot their food easier. Other researchers claim that geese may perform this impressive trick for fun. These birds seem to like showing off, eh, just a little bit. Ducks can surf. They do it when they want to catch some food in the waves or move through the water faster. These birds have no arms to paddle with, but they still can't resist a good wave. Despite really hot days, bees tend to fly off to find a river or pond and collect water droplets. Then they go back to their hive and spit that water out. This helps other bees cool down, freshen up, and have a drink if they're thirsty. People have fewer friends as they get older. They also get pickier about who they hang out with. Chimps have friendship habits of their own. Older animals are usually involved in a mutual friendship. Two grown-up apes would often sit together and groom each other. But younger chimps are more likely to form one-sided relationships. One animal would groom the other, which wouldn't respond. Pigeons can learn to differentiate real words from those that don't make any sense. There was an experiment where scientists showed these birds four-letter English words and trained them to pick these words. Or they would peck a particular symbol if it was a four-letter non-word, like pizru. <laughs> Pigeons managed to build vocabulary with almost 60 words and more than 8,000 non-words. Pigeons can also do math. Although these birds don't appear to be smart at first, they're at a similar level as monkeys. In one study, pigeons had to compare nine images. Each had a different number of objects. The pigeons managed to rank the images according to the number of objects, which means they can count. People usually perceive giraffes as one species, but there are actually four species of these animals. Just like brown bears are not the same as polar bears. These four groups have been separated for one to two million years, and there's no evidence that their genes have been mixed up. Dolphins use a wide range of different sounds, like whistles, clicks, and squeals. They use them to communicate with one another, as well as for echolocation. That's a process where an animal emits a sound wave. I do that all the time. It bounces off some object, which creates an echo. This provides dolphins with the information about the size of that object and the distance to it. Dolphins can hear sounds from as far as 15 miles away. Most flies can't hear like we do. Their bodies are too small to have a developed hearing system. And still, they can locate the chirping of crickets. In other words, flies can pinpoint the origin of a sound, just like other animals. But they can't hear some things, like their own buzzing. The expression, to sweat like a pig, doesn't make sense because pigs don't sweat. They're born without sweat glands. So in case they want to cool down, their only option is to look for a puddle of mud, lie down, and roll in it. To clear up any confusion, I sweat like a pig. There are polka-dotted zebras. They're rare because this coloring is the result of a genetic mutation. But such zebras might not be as good at repelling bugs as more common zebras with stripes. This pattern seems to attract fewer insects, such as horseflies. It might be because stripes make zebras harder to see in tall grass. Crows are extremely intelligent. Perhaps that's something to crow about. They can recognize and remember human faces, so it's best not to get on their bad side. These birds can scream at those who have wronged them, but if they like you, they'll give you small trinkets in return. Crows have the biggest brain among birds. Only parrots have a larger one. It helps crows use smart ways to get food. For example, they drop walnuts in front of moving cars so that the vehicles break the shells. And these birds also have excellent memory. When they save food for later, they always remember where it's hidden. There are snails with hairy shells. This option is pretty handy. Thanks to it, a snail can remain stuck to wet surfaces, like grass and leaves. The grizzly bear has a bite so strong, it can crush a bowling ball. Its bite force is 1,160 psi. But there are animals who have an even stronger bite. Those are gorillas, bull sharks, jaguars, and Nile crocodiles. 
better watch your fingers. Ghost crabs growl using their teeth that are in their stomachs. These creatures first try to defend themselves or scare other creatures away with the help of their claws. But if this method fails, they act like dogs and start growling. Ants have some sort of a built-in pedometer, an internal mechanism that helps them keep track of where they are and how long they've been traveling. This is also how they find their way back home. The giraffe has a rather long tongue. Its length can reach up to 20 inches. Thanks to this, the animal can browse on the highest and juiciest leaves. The giraffe's tongue is dark blue or dark gray. That's likely to provide some protection from UV rays and prevent sunburn. On your tongue! Ow! The giraffe has fewer neck bones than the sloth. Its neck is long, but only has 7 vertebrae, while the sloth has 10. Sloths are some of the slowest wild animals you can find. But they're very skilled when it comes to swimming. These creatures can swim 3 to 4 times as fast as they move on land. They need this skill to survive because they live in rainforests that have a tendency to get flooded. Bees can fly higher than Mount Everest, which is almost 30,000 feet high. Some honeybees also sometimes hold hands, which actually resemble tiny hooks. These insects like doing it while sleeping. Grasshoppers have ears on each side of their first abdominal segment. In other words, their ears are on their stomach, tucked under the wings. These ears are membranes that vibrate after being affected by sound waves. This allows the insect to hear the mating songs of other grasshoppers. Penguins seem to have built-in water goggles. Their eyes work way better when these animals are underwater than when they're on dry land. This is a good thing to have when they hunt in dark, murky waters. Penguins can be 15 inches to 3.5 feet tall, depending on the species. But 40 million years ago, they were 6 feet tall and weighed up to 250 pounds. Elephants can't jump. They do have some cool abilities, like an excellent sense of smell and a strong personality that influences their complex social life. But these gentle giants have inflexible ankles and weak lower leg muscles. That's another reason why long-distance running is so difficult for them and also hurdles and the pole vault. Kangaroos can jump pretty high, but they can't walk backward. When these animals hop, they push off the ground with both of their big feet at the same time. Their massive muscular tail helps them to keep balance. This way, kangaroos move forward and jump high, but it also prevents them from moving backward. By the way, emus, penguins, and alligators can't go backward either. Polar bears are not white. Really. Their skin is black. But the hairs covering their bodies are transparent and hollow. When sunlight hits the fur, it stays trapped inside that hollow part. Also, salt particles stick to the fur and act as a light scattering layer. Polar bears are almost impossible to detect with infrared cameras. Such cameras are thermal, which means they react to heat. But the fur of polar bears maintains the same temperature as the air around them. Polar bears have a unique way of saying hi to one another. They touch noses. If one bear is eating, another one may come up and touch its nose. This is like asking, hey, can I join you? There's a small animal called the kangaroo mouse. It doesn't drink water at all. This creature lives in Nevada, which is a pretty dry area with lots of casinos. So the animal has learned to get liquid from the seeds and other stuff it eats and stays away from the blackjack tables. A jumping flea can accelerate more quickly than a spacecraft. This creature reaches a height of 3 inches in a millisecond. Its body contains stretchy, rubber-like proteins. They allow the flea to store and release energy pretty fast when needed. One of the strongest birds on our planet is the harpy eagle. It's an apex predator and you can find it in the tropical regions of Central and South America. In terms of their lifting capabilities, they've been recorded to tackle up to 40 pounds. The females of the species are bigger and stronger and can sometimes lift even more than that. Why do they need to lift that much, you might ask? Well, because of their menus. They often hunt mammals that are larger than they are, like sloths or even monkeys. The bird's strength mostly comes from their sharp claws, which are similar in size to the human hand. Not only are these claws good at carrying things, but they also help the birds crush objects like the bones of their prey. Owls are equally as strong, and the great horned one is among the toughest birds out there. 
the primary residence of this species is in North and South America. As for their eating preferences, you'll often find them hunting for small mammals, like rabbits or other rodents. On average, an adult male of this species can weigh up to 5.5 pounds, but it can lift up to four times its body weight. That's because of its awesome wingspan, about five feet, and sharp claws that stretch for up to three inches in length. The biggest type of falcon on Earth is the Jeer Falcon. It may weigh somewhere around three pounds, but it can lift up to five pounds. It's similar to you trying to fly while carrying a panda bear. They also have a wingspan of about 6.6 .6 feet, paired with razor sharp claws that can go up to 3.1 inches in length. Yikes! No wonder the Jeer Falcon is one of the most feared predators in the Arctic region. They mostly feed on birds, such as ptarmigans, waterfowls, pheasants, and even other falcons. The bald eagle is the national emblem of the United States, so you can safely assume it's a powerful and independent bird. It can weigh anywhere between 6.6 .6 and 13.9 pounds. It stands pretty tall too, at 28 to 40 inches. The greatest weight a bald eagle has been recorded to carry is 15 pounds. Interestingly, their diet mostly consists of fish. The reason why the bald eagle can carry so much weight is because of its large wingspan, which can be from 71 to 90 inches. Apart from that, it has an impressive diving speed too, up to 99 miles per hour. One of the largest birds of prey in North and South America is called the red-tailed hawk. Looking at its measurements, you'll see it can weigh roughly 3.5 pounds. Their wings stretch for 4.5 feet and their strong claws can reach three inches in length. Similar to the Jeer Falcon, these powerful birds can carry almost double their weight. You'll find them hunting for squirrels and rabbits for the most part, but they do enjoy small birds too, as well as fish and reptiles. Taking the gold medal for heavy weightlifting on our planet is not a bird, but an insect, the bumblebee. They can lift up to 80% of their body weight when they're in the air. That would be a lot even if they were simply crawling. Not only are they strong, but they seem to have great knowledge too. To reach as many flowers as they do to gather pollen, they use complex mathematics that can be difficult even for a computer. That's because these amazing insects take into consideration all the elements and parameters to ensure the results are very precise. Bumblebees look at the distance they need to travel, estimate how much energy they have left, and even use the direction of the wind to boost their speed. They're also able to check which flowers have the best quality pollen before heading to them. If that's not astonishing enough, they don't even stop to make all these measurements. They do it while flying. Mosquitoes are just as impressive when it comes to their flying skills, not because of how much they can lift, although that's also quite impressive. The belly of a mosquito can carry three times its own weight. But it's also their unique flying style that makes them special and hard to study. For starters, they spend a lot of time in the air. It's where they find mates, hunt, and even lay eggs. Because of how hard it is to study the flight of such a small insect, for a long period of time, we simply assumed that mosquitoes were not that good at flying. But in 2017, a team of researchers eventually figured out how mosquitoes stayed in the air. The scientists used eight cameras for the experiment, and each of them captured 10,000 frames per second. Bees or flies, for example, catch wind under their large wing flaps and use it to boost their speed. Unlike them, mosquitoes use a combination of movements. They have short wing flaps that they pair with a spinning motion. This unique flying pattern allows them to create pockets of air, which both launches them forward and keeps them afloat. Try to imagine sticking your hand out of a car window while driving. Each time you change the angle of your hand, you can feel it being lifted all because of that small pocket of air that is trapped in your palm. That's exactly what mosquitoes do, and it allows them to move in whatever direction they want with enough boost. So, we've established that all sorts of flying creatures on our planet can carry a lot of weight, but would it be possible to actually get lifted up by a bunch of insects? The answer is a bit complex, but let's look at the data. 
your average house fly can lift somewhere around 10 milligrams, which is roughly 22 millionths of a pound. That's 50% of its own body weight. You try to carry 55 pounds and fly at the same time. If we divide 110 pounds by how much a house fly can carry, the answer seems simple. You'll need 5 million house flies to lift you off the ground. Hold on a minute. Just because we figured out how many house flies we need doesn't mean we're done here. Firstly, imagine how much time you'd need to gather 5 million of these insects. Then, there's another pressing issue, the surface area. For each of these insects to be lifting the assigned weight, they'd need to be touching you. On average, an adult human has the surface area of about 17.2 square feet. Each housefly needs roughly a quarter square inch of gripping surface. I'll spare you the math, but it means you can only have 39,680 flies sitting on you at any given time. Flies sitting on top of other flies? That won't work either, since some of them won't be able to use their wings. You might consider attaching each fly to a strong filament, which will then be attached to you. You'd need a really strong material to do that, but delicate enough to be attached to a fly. They're not as strong as bumblebees, but butterflies do deserve a place on the honorable mentions list. Sure, they don't lift and carry things, but they do need their strength to avoid predators and to be able to fly. And most important of them all, they need to be powerful enough to come out of their cocoons so that they can develop properly. Once the cocoon cracks open, they have to find their way out. Most of them need to flip to get into the best position. They need to climb out of their shell, all within minutes, sometimes even seconds. Moths are equally as delicate and fascinating. They can't carry a lot either, but some studies have shown they can transport their reproductive partner away from danger when needed. Not only is that really nice of them, it's also a sign that moths can carry their own weight mid-flight. However, the distance they travel has to be really short because they lose energy really fast. Imagine you're somewhere in Africa. You're riding in a jeep in a hot valley with friends. The vehicle passes a group of lions, hyenas, and giraffes, and then you stop near some elephants. These giant, majestic animals pass by, and you realize how tiny you actually are. Suddenly, the elephants panic, raise their trunks, and scream. You look around and try to understand the reason. In the sky, you see a strange plane. The elephants run away. The plane is approaching, and you realize that it's not a plane at all, but a massive bird of prey, a tawny eagle. It's bigger than a business jet, but smaller than a Boeing. The bird of monstrous size is approaching the group of elephants with astonishing speed. Salvation is impossible. With taloned feet, the bird grabs the largest elephant, flaps its wings, and takes its prey to the sky. From the airflow created by the bird's wings, your jeep almost flips over. Welcome to the world where birds of prey are the size of airplanes. This world is actually not that fantastical. Six million years ago, Argentavis magnificens was one of the most terrifying creatures in the sky. This predator was 12 feet long and had a wingspan around 23 feet. The bird was about the size of a biplane, but weighed much less, around 160 pounds or an adult man's average weight. Thanks to its powerful large beak, Argentavis magnificens could swallow a rabbit whole. Well, that was six million years ago. Now the largest bird is the Andean condor. They reach 33 pounds, about the weight of a small dog, and a wingspan of 10 feet, which is more than the height of any player in the NBA. Fortunately, these birds are vultures. They feed on carrion and don't attack live animals. In a world where all birds are the size of planes, an Andean condor would be as big as a passenger Boeing. And just like a Boeing, it would need a lot of space to take off. The muscles of the condor wouldn't allow it to lift such a massive weight into the air. First, the bird would need to climb a very high mountain. From there, it would run down and accelerate before it could take off. Each condor flight would end with an emergency landing. If even one such bird settled in the countryside and decided to land in a small village, it would demolish all the houses and roads. 
Only dust and ruins would remain instead of a town. Size is the only danger from this bird because it's a vulture. But you couldn't say the same for eagles and hawks. In reality, these birds hunt large prey. They can easily grab a salmon, monkey, or sloth in their feet. And if they grow to the size of an airplane, they would love people, cows, and elephants. These birds need much more food now because they've increased in size. Typical fare is not enough. The birds will become the top of the food chain, and humanity will face some problems. The red-tailed hawk is the most common bird of prey in North America. Often, these birds can be found on the roofs of skyscrapers in New York City. Now, imagine these birds the size of an airplane as they fly to the city and land on a skyscraper. They don't even need to leave the city to find their prey. Here it is, running through the streets between buildings. Hawks would destroy the roofs of houses. People would have to create special defense nets with electric discharge and hang them on each house's roof. The peregrine falcon is one of the most common birds of prey in the world. They can hunt not only game on the ground, but also in the air. Catching a bat is not a problem for them during the flight. When they change in size, the bat would be replaced by planes. These birds, noticing prey, drop at a speed of 200 miles per hour. This is the speed of an expensive supercar. And of course, this speed will increase tenfold because of the weight of the giant falcon. While diving, it would outrun even a jet fighter. But we would face the most significant problem because of a golden eagle. It's the largest bird of prey in the world. Sharp claws, beak, sharp vision, and fast speeds are the weapons that make it the strongest among all competitors. At their normal size, they even attack deer. Now, a deer would be the smallest prey for these creatures. People would have to build special shields or create a sonic weapon to ward off the bird's attacks. In big cities, this won't be a problem, but people would live day to day in small towns and villages. Eagles can spot people dozens of miles away. Combat with birds resembles fights with dragons. The feathers of huge eagles would be a costly building material. Only three or four feathers of any bird of prey could protect a house's roof from rain. Birds of prey have a unique grip mechanism in their feet, thanks to the muscles involved in carrying prey. Therefore, they can transport heavy weights over long distances. If humans could tame a bird, they could use it as a cargo plane, like pigeon mail. But instead of riding, birds would deliver heavy loads. Most birds won't give in to training, though, and will fight with people for territory. Moving around at night would be much safer than during the day, but you risk your life even at this time. Imagine that you are riding your bicycle home at night and decide to take a shortcut through the forest. You ride along a path through the thicket of the forest and notice something strange. To your left, the tops of the trees begin to shake. The leaves rustle very quickly, almost as if a silent, strong wind shakes it. This is strange because the other trees are quiet. You stare into the darkness. Two large glowing eyes, the size of basketballs, appear among the foliage. It's not leaves of wood shaking, but feathers. You have met an owl, one of the most skilled nocturnal predators. You flee, spinning the petals as quickly as possible. You hope that you left the predator behind. There's silence in the air. You look around and see that the owl is flying behind you absolutely noiselessly. The feathers of this bird help carry out silent flights so the owl can clearly hear its prey. You pass a herd of sleeping horses and the owl turns its attention to them. In the forest, in the field, in the mountains, in the steppe, birds of prey cause chaos everywhere. Still, the most incredible events occur in the ocean. The northern gannet is a bird that tracks prey from the sky. As soon as a fish appears in the sea, the gannet flies down with great speed and dives deep into the water to get lunch. These birds grow to an airplane size in our new world and thus hunt sharks and other large fish. It won't like it if someone's fishing boat interferes during dinner. Gannets can, like a battering ram, break through the deck of the ship from the air with its beak. And of course, there would be brave people who try to tame birds for fun. To tame a bird of prey, you need to climb to the top of a high mountain and steal a large egg from the nest. A chick the size of a dog will require a lot of food. 
But if you are patient, in a few years, you will have the most unusual friend. Imagine that you have trained a peregrine falcon and are flying high in the sky at fast speeds. During the flight, you may meet another pilot who is sitting on a golden eagle. An air fight begins between both of you. Our world would be like a fantasy movie with birds instead of dragons.